Uh, the broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to all of you in today's session. This is the second in the series of CPDs, the 2020 CPD series that ACC has launched to ensure that our members during the, these testing times can <laughs> convert their spare time into a blessing. Um, I would like to welcome you all on behalf of ACC today, and it's great that you were able to spare your time and hopefully we'll be able to add value to your knowledge base and you'll go richer from here today. Um, first of all, before I continue, can you just quickly, uh, by way of your messages, let me know if you can hear me clearly? Just a few people. You can just type yes if you can hear me clearly. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's perfect. So everyone can hear us clearly. Okay, before I continue, um, uh, we have received a question already. I'll be answering the questions in between. And this one is actually related to the last session. Ali Heather, I'll be talking that with our assistants for today. Uh, Nizam, who is with us, but let's formally start the session first. So, Auzubillahi minash shaitan irajim, Bismillahir Rahman Nirahim, Rabbashrahli Sadri wa Yassirli Amri wa Haluk Tatim Milisani Yafkahu Kauli. O Allah, open my heart and ease my task for me and remove the impediments from my speech so that they may understand what I say. Today's session is on one of the most important topics for any text professionals, uh, uh, not just any text professional being in the public practice, but any professional dealing in taxation. That is the filing of income tax return, an overview and the common issues that we face. So let's start today's session. First of all, I'll just quickly introduce myself for those who are attending a session of mine for the first time. Um, I'm basically uh, ACCA's MNP chair, as well as the chair of ACCA's taxation committee. I'm honored to be representing Pakistan on the Global Tax Forum. Uh, I'm also honored to be contributing on several other platforms, one of the key ones being part of the editorial board of ACCA's MESA region publication, Professional Insights. Um, I'm a fellow chartered certified accountant. Uh, I'm also a CFA charter holder. Um, I also hold CAA, BFP, CPFA, anti-money laundering, fraud risk management specialization, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with regard to professional experience, uh, I have a fund of 17 years plus experience gained in top management positions working both in leading British as well as Pakistani companies. Currently, I'm serving as a managing partner at MLCC, that's Millennium Law and Corporate Company, which is the pioneer ACC and legal practicing firm in Pakistan. In addition to that, I'm also sitting on the board of several corporate entities uh, and think tanks with regard to trainings. I'm uh, an experienced trainer having delivered uh, professional trainings in corporate, public and academia sectors. My portfolio including having conducting, conducted mandatory promotional trainings of government officers at MPDD, professional trainings at the likes of National Bank of Pakistan, HPL, MCB, uh, PPCBL, uh, Baloki Power Plant, IBP in collaboration with State Bank, Lahore, Karachi, Tech, Pakistan Tech Bar Associations, Lahore, Karachi Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Beria University, UAT, and our very own alma mater, ACCA. For those of you who do like to read, uh, I like, uh, I'm, I, don't just like, I'm actually a regular contributor to various national and international publications like Daily Nation, Daily Times, uh, Pakistan Today, Express Tribune, Blue Chip Journal. Um, I'm honored to have received ACC's Exceptional Public Value and National Advocacy Awards. I'm a life member, twice serving Chairman Finance and Economic Affairs Lison Committee and four times uh, Chairman Lison Committee of Lahore Tech Bar Association. 
Um, I also am uh, the youngest ever uh, director of the board of Hamdard Thinkers Forum. Um, the, a director at the Miller Thinkers Forum and professionally associated with uh, various global organizations. This is a slide representing some of our key existing clients and associations of our firm, uh, all the way from top names in various sectors to our own alma mater that you can see. I'll just skip through the next few slides as you'll be having a copy of this presentation and can search me online too and can access our firm's website too. Uh, but yeah, one thing which uh, is an honor for us being ACC member is the, that our firm being the pioneer ACC practicing firm in Pakistan was actually uh, profiled and a detailed report was published by ACCA. The link to that is available here. You'll be having that in your presentation too. So you can go through that and hopefully that this would uh, serve as an inspiration for you to also come in the field of practice. A professional acknowledgement that several legislation uh, and other reports sir. of the FPR and our own firm MLCC. I would just like to point out, uh, we cannot see your screen. You need to share your screen as well. Okay. Perfect. Thank okay, you. guys. Uh, you can see the screen now. Okay, great. So, so yeah. Uh, this is the link of the ACCS report on the firm that I was referring to. You'll be having that in the presentation. And uh, I was just going through the professional acknowledgement that several legislation and other reports, importantly of FPR, Federal Board of Revenue, and our own firm, MLCC Millennium Law and Corporate Company, on this subject have been utilized in the development of this presentation. And as usual, uh, due to limited time and the extensive volume of the topic that we are covering, while we have strived to cover the maximum possible content within the available time, the content coverage as you can imagine had to be prioritized and managed in order to suit the requirements and constraints of today's session but we'll try to cover all the important points so you have nothing to worry about so first of all um, before going into the thick of things uh, some vital concepts relating to itr income tax return direct versus indirect tax so if you want to categorize taxation into two broad categories you can categorize them as either direct taxes or indirect taxes. Um, I would like to take your feedback. Uh, would any of the attendees like to share what do you think are direct or indirect taxes? And I'll give you about 40 seconds to write your answers. Uh, while they are writing the answers, uh, Nizam, one query that's uh, been received repeatedly on my social media and today too is that members are asking when can they expect to receive the CPD email for the last session. So uh, a brief email on uh, all the past webinars conducted uh, are being sent out quarterly uh, by the head of member affairs. Uh, so they'll be receiving the links, resources, and everything in that very email. Uh, no, no, I think they are referring to the email that we mentioned where they'll receive their uh, CPD attendance certificate and the link. Is that also being sent on quarterly yes, basis would... now? No, that will be sent by the head of member affairs. Okay, uh, so hopefully you'll be receiving that soon. Um, there was some family um, a medical emergency with him, uh, but I'll speak with him and we'll update you on the frequency and the expected date soon, inshallah. Okay, guys, so um, anyone? Nobody knows what direct or indirect taxation are. No, we've got quite a few responses. So Uzair is saying direct taxes are paid directly to the government. Okay, Mohammed Sami, direct taxes are paid by individual himself on their income or salon direct tax where tax have been submitted direct to the regulatory authority. Um, 
Zishan Majid, all taxes which are withheld at source are called direct taxes, rest are indirect. Um, okay, direct taxes are this is so heap sajad direct taxes are applied directly on the income okay we have received so many responses that's wonderful i can't possibly read each and every one and respond to you but well done uh, most of the responses have been correct uh, a few have missed or confused um, a bit of the concepts but that's fine i'll explain that for you so direct taxes as the term implies are taxes which are levied directly on one's income so for example the tax income tax is a direct tax uh, if you are a salaried individual this tax is deducted directly from the income similarly um, if we are a business person and uh, our business is making profits the tax that we pay on the net profit is a direct tax. These taxes can be collected in a very uh, in a in several different forms. They can be withheld at source, and one can be asked to pay them at a certain point of time after the computation of the profits. Uh, our tax system in Pakistan is actually a bit unique in this that we do have um, a kind of. Uh, uh, a situation due to the nature of the undocumented economy where we have used tools normally reserved for indirect taxes to collect the direct taxes which oftentimes create confusion for uh, some of the new entrants in the field anyway indirect taxes are taxes that are levied on the services or provisions of the goods on the supply chain and not the income itself so for example the sales tax is a prime example of indirect tax in pakistan so um, income tax and sales tax are the prime examples of the direct or indirect taxes withholding somebody um, did mention about withholding while answering my query about direct and indirect taxes withholding comes from the word withheld and basically the concept is this that for certain taxes and they include both direct and indirect taxes um, the payer the person who is making the payment is required to withhold either full or a person of the applicable tax and deposit that to the government so basically that person becomes a withholding agent the one who is making the payment in this scenario there are certain requirements they are not the topic of discussion today but what's important is that you have this concept the understanding so that when we'll be discussing the income tax return you would know what we are talking about so um it's kind of a thankless job per se that a person a business individual is basically deputing their own resources for doing uh, the regulators work the tax man's work depositing the money to the government then has to actually go through the withholding withholding agents checks and balances and the audits too uh, but that's the law of the land that's how things work so income tax return is required to be filed uh, normally annually there are a few exceptions to that uh, net income um, all of you are qualified accountants ACCA members uh, otherwise very well aware so I don't think I need to explain net income um, the frequency for filing these income tax return is normally annually uh, statutory format to report state of affairs and performance is how you can describe an income tax return and basically an income tax return is based on the fundamental accounting concepts of income statement and balance sheet which you have studied and mastered during your studies however the format is in a statutory way it's as per the requirement of the government it's in line with the taxation laws which you'll see in a moment but the fundamental concepts are those of uh, the accounting concepts that you have studied so basically there is an am amalgamation of the knowledge of taxation that you have acquired and your accounting knowledge you being accounting professionals are already uh, uh, standing at a place of advantage compared to anybody else from any other field because your accounting concepts are very well all you need to do is master the local taxation laws and you'll be in a fine space to handle all these income tax returns so let's move forward 
Now, uh, before we go on to actually filing the income tax return, uh, there are two key components that we need to have a look at. The first one having two parts is who is actually exempt and who is required to file the income tax return. So the exempt persons are basically any widow, an orphan below the age of 25 years of age, a disabled person, or in the case of ownership of immovable property, a non-resident person. So who is required to file? A simple way is to simply say everyone else. But let's actually have the look of the relevant section of the income tax ordinance section 114 which outlines uh, in detail the persons who are required to file the income tax return. So it says that subject to this ordinance the income tax ordinance 2001 the following persons are required to furnish a return of income for a tax year namely every company every person other than a company whose taxable income for the year exceeds the maximum amount that is not chargeable to tax under this ordinance for the year. This is the legal lingua, how they say things. So basically what uh, this clause is saying, 1142AB, it's basically saying that, um, uh, 1142, sorry. It's basically saying that every person other than a company whose taxable limit is above the BTL below taxable limit income, they'll be required to file the income tax return. Then the fourth uh, sub clause is saying, uh, the th third sub clause was basically omitted. So the fourth one now says, any nonprofit organization as defined in clause 36 of section two. Uh, so you can't really say that if you are in the nonprofit sector, you don't need to file your income tax return. One would still be required to file the income tax return, as you can see. Any welfare or institution approved under clause 58 of part one of the second schedule would also be required to file their income tax return. And similarly, any person not covered by clause 8A, AB, AC, or AD, who has been charged to tax in respect of any of the two preceding tax years. So if you were not covered otherwise, but you were charged to tax in any of the two preceding tax years, you would still need to file your income tax return. And similarly, um, if you claim to carry a loss forward under this ordinance for a tax year, you would need to file your income tax return. If you own immovable property with a land area of 500 square yards or more or on any flat located in areas falling within the municipal limits existing immediately before the commencement of local government laws in the provinces or areas in cantonment or the Islamabad capital territory, you would still be required to file the income tax return. If you own immovable property with a land area of 500 square yards or more located in a rating area on a flat, uh, now, uh, just have a look. There is a difference between the areas of flat or other immovable property. Uh, there is a cultural difference between some of our cities. So, for example, in Karachi, there is a trend of uh, flats. It's uh, much more common in Karachi. It's very rare in Lahore and in major cities of Punjab. So, anyway, all these uh, different um, uh, different types of immovable properties are covered within the taxation laws. So, if somebody owns a flat. Uh, having a covered area of 200,000 square feet or more located in a rating area, they need to file their income tax return. And last but not the least, if you own a motor vehicle having engine capacity above 1,000 cc, you would need to file the income tax return. Similarly, um, as I've often uh, discussed and told in my various sessions, if somebody has obtained a national tax number, the NTN number, and you go out of the business, uh, you have stopped doing business, you need to go through the proper process, inform, deregister. You can't just stop filing the tax returns. If you have obtained NTN, you need to file your tax return. If one is the holder of a commercial or industrial connection of electricity where the amount of annual bill exceeds 500,000, this limit has been revised, then you'd need to file the income tax return. Similarly, a resident person registered with any chamber of commerce and industry or any trade or business association or any market committee or pay attention, any professional body, including Pakistan Engineering Council, Pakistan Medical and Dental Council, Bar Council or any provincial bar, 
uh, institute of cost and management accountants chartered accountants every resident person being an individual required to file foreign income and asset statement under section 116a would also need to file their income tax return and every individual whose income under the head income from business exceeds 300,000 but does not exceed 400,000 in a tax year is also required to furnish return of income from that tax year so as you can see as i've often shared that in law they devised the law in a way so that all the major areas are covered so you can see from this list that this is pretty exhaustive and practically anybody who is not within the exempt category would need to file their income tax return this brings us to the next topic which is the concept of filer previously the things were uh, somewhat simpler to say there was a concept or that you were either a filer or you were not a filer not anymore the concept has somewhat been amended in the last finance act so now the concept is that one is either a filer or not on the atl non-filer per se has been removed so what is a filer a filer is any individual whose name any individual individual is defined as any taxpayer falling in any of the category that can be a business that can be aop etc so we are referring to individual in that sense not in the sense of a single person just to be on uh, just to be clear to everyone so a filer is someone a taxpayer whose name uh, a tax filer uh, is someone whose name is on active taxpayer list what is the active taxpayer list that is a list released by fpr um previously it used to be updated and released on every weekly basis there was a change in the regime which i'll refer to in a bit but that list is now released by fpr on the first of march of every year and then uh, this list is continuously upgraded so what is a filer anybody whose name is on atl and someone whose name is not on atl technically technically that person would not be a filer but we don't call that person non-filer anymore we just refer to it professionally as not being on the active taxpayer list um, there's an interesting concept that you should understand uh, the filer list basically works a year in the past so for example at present it's first of april 2020 this falls within the tax year 2020 that would be ending on june 30th of june 2020 now the active taxpayer list was released on 1st of march and that basically covers tax year 2019 and the next list would be issued on 1st march so if somebody wanted to come on the active taxpayer list for the duration of this year this tax year and till the next ATL is released, that person would actually need to file their previous year's tax return too. So they'll need to file their tax return for the tax year 2019. And then they'll also definitely need to file the return for tax year 2020. However, if they just file their tax return for tax year 2020, which is ongoing, the ATL for that hasn't been released. So they would not be on ATL and they would not be filer. So that's something very important to remember, a very uh, fine point, but important one. And ATL is still upgraded on weekly basis. So there is a continuous ongoing upgradation, but now uh, a change that was introduced uh, the year before the last one has been continued. There is a penalty. So the people who haven't filed their tax return within the due times after all the extensions and still want to come on the active taxpayer list they can but now they need to pay some fines what do you think is it a good idea to pay the fines just some quick comments before i continue osama is saying no hassan is saying no mubashir is saying no why guys why no 
yes no yes no yes no yes 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 definitely government extended it for a long time no it's a good option if the benefit outweigh cost okay so we have a divergence of opinion amongst our members however largely people are saying it's a good thing so that people will start getting in the habit of filing their tax return on a timely basis anyway um keeping aside the discussion whether you think as a professional this is a good thing or the bad thing the fact of the matter is that's the law of the land and it has to be followed so if somebody still wants to go on atl they can even after the atl has been released after the due date but they'll need to pay a fine depending on their structure whether they are an individual they are an individual aop or a company uh, by the way it's as low as 1000 rupees only so an active taxpayer list formal definition is also given it means the list instituted by the board under section 181a and includes such list issued by the azad jammu and kashmir central board of revenue or gilgit baltistan council board of revenue and this was actually an important change with regard to harmonization because previously the atl of fpr was uh, different and then uh, people who were filers from uh, Azad Jammu and Kashmir uh, and Gilgit Baltistan were not being able to come on to that. And it was creating a lot of difficulties for businesses, especially those that were working on a trans uh, provincial basis. So this was a good initiative taken to address that issue. So what are the benefits? why are we even talking about filing the tax return so what if we don't file well first of all it's a national responsibility so being a responsible citizen a professional and other even otherwise just being a citizen of the country it is our responsibility and obligation to actually file our returns and pay our due taxes but even if you think materially for other benefits from a business perspective there are material benefits number one which is written at the end peace of mind if you are filing your returns you can avoid the fines the penalties uh, even in worst cases the prosecution so you'll have peace of mind number two you would be paying lower tax rates as much as 100 percent less on certain transactions like profit on debt, advanced income tax on property transactions capital gains dividends etc if you are a filer which means if your name is on the active taxpayer list. Similarly, no tax deduction on certain transactions like cash withdrawals from bank for filers. And then any withholding taxes that are deducted, most of them, almost all of them, are adjustable for a filer. Whereas for a non-filer, those taxes are not only deducted, they are deducted at almost double the rate and they are non-adjustable so they are paying higher taxes and it's practically going down the drain so it doesn't make much sense why would you not want to do that obviously we can argue that the system needs uh, certain changes uh, structural changes need to be made etc uh, but if you just look at it uh, from a standstill point of view the benefits far outweigh uh, any reason for not coming on the filer list so before we go on to the actual thick of the things the practical demonstration and the common issues now is a good time to take your questions so i believe some questions have been written before and rest you can uh, write right now while nizam would be helping me to answer that so nizam can you please scroll up and start asking from the first question that we received Oh, sir. Uh, uh, ask whether the exempt person will be considered as filer or non-filer for banking transaction. Unfortunately, um, they would be considered non-filer if they are not on active taxpayer list. The only exception to that is what I covered in the last CPD session for the Second Amendment. Uh, tax law second amendment ordinance which is focused on foreign investors uh, they are the only one that are being given an exception uh, but this is still in discussion and like uh, uh, 
uh, all the professionals, all the reputable professionals, uh, your body ACC and your taxation committee has recommended the government to create a mechanism for these people to uh, bring them within the filer spectrum, especially when they are not required to file the tax return. Hope that answers the question. Next one. Deep is asking what is the uh, limit of maximum amount under section 1142AB? Who is asking that? Sandeep. Okay, Sandeep, a good question. Uh, basically, what Sandeep has asked is that what is the maximum amount under 114AB, right? 1142AB. Yeah. Okay, so he is basically asking what is the BTL limit below taxable limit? Sandeep, that's 400,000. Next one. Mohsen Ikram is asking why the non filer term has been changed. Were there any legal implications associated with the term uh, yes, non-filer? There was a debate and there were legal implications associated. Uh, however, it hasn't made uh, much difference in practical terms, in terms of the benefits and the cost. So it's only that uh, the term non-filer doesn't exist. It simply means you are not a filer, you are not on ATL. but you'll still be paying twice the tax rates. You would still have the withholding non-adjustable. You would still be liable to, in worst cases, prosecution. So not much difference in practical terms there. Hope that answers the question. Next one. Babar is asking where to treat WHT deducted on mobile prepaid loan. Babar, that's a good question, but please hold your horses. We'll be covering that in the practical demo. Next one. What is the deregistration process for sole proprietorship, Omar Maksud? Omar, that's a good question. Uh, it's not within today's purview, but it's such a good and vital question. I will briefly address that. Um, Omar, uh, when you want to deregister, if a sole proprietorship has stopped doing the business, you need to, first of all, see all your filings are in order. You have no liability with FPR or any other government regulatory body. And then you need to file an application to your relevant RTO, uh, intimating them that you have stopped doing the business and requesting them for deregistering. Uh, it's a cumbersome process. Many consultants are not even, unfortunately, they are not even aware that it exists. Uh, the process is then, the application goes through a process where visits would be made to your place of business, inquiries would be made. It's quite cumbersome. You'll have to keep on visiting them, sending them reminders. If everything goes fine, then eventually they would allow you to do that. But you'll actually need to go through this entire process. Hope that answers the question. Next one. What if a person has not filed the IRT for the tax year 1920? After filing return, can he or she be inactive uh, tax list after filing in April? Zahra Shah. Zahra, that's a good question, but you had a typo. It's not IRT, it's ITR, income tax return. So Zahra, if a person wants to file the income tax return now for tax year 2019, because the ATL, as I told you, goes one year in pendency. So at the moment, while we are in tax year 2020, the ATL that is currently running is of tax year 2019. So um, you'll need to file, first of all, your tax return for 2019, obviously for 2022. And then you need to pay the penalty for being the late filer. Once you pay that penalty, your name would appear on the active taxpayer list. So the good news is you can still come on the ATL, but we need to um, start changing our national habits because the discussion is that ultimately the regulators and the government want to do away with this leniency. And ultimately they plan that once uh, the tax base is sufficiently extended, uh, they will withdraw this facility and uh, people who will miss the deadline would then not appear on ATL. But as of right now, there is flexibility available. Hope that answers. Next one. When someone inherits piece of land, what would be the treatment? Walid Ahmed. 
Okay, uh, Wally then everyone, uh, let's do a thing. Uh, I love to answer your questions, you know that, but we have a limited time. We have two to two and a half hour sessions every day uh, in these series, so we have to focus on the topic in hand, but we can do one thing. At the end of the session, in the final Q&A session, if we have time left, I'll answer your question. Or you can send me a message on LinkedIn. I will be sharing my personal contact details with you and I'll answer your question. And third one, you can send a suggestion to member affairs or even directly me. I'll forward it to member affairs as chairman MNP and taxation committee, suggesting the topics you think should be covered. So uh, in the interest of everyone, I think it would be fair if we focus on the topic. Otherwise, uh, we might not be able to cover the topic fully and that would not be fair to all the other participants. Hope you understand, but I'll try to answer these uh, questions, advanced questions or uh, questions that are not directly relevant to the topic if we get some time at the end of the session. Next one. What are the implications of income tax for non-resident Pakistani and what is the procedure for it? Should we need to submit wealth statement or hum Saeed? Uh, so it, it's a good question. It would basically depend on uh, your individual circumstances, whether you have a Pakistan source income or not, whether you have any property or bank account in Pakistan or not, and whether you have any property abroad. So there are quite a few questions you need to answer and uh, your answer would depend actually on your exact circumstances. So shoot me a direct message on LinkedIn and I'll be happy to address that. Next one. What is the time requirements for individuals to retain records relating to their personal returns? Sikandar Ishtiak. Five years at least. Next one. What is the purpose of withholding tax and how a withholding agent deals with it? Uh, Junaid Iqbal. The purpose of the withholding tax is to ensure that the tax is collected in a non-documented economy at source while the payment is being made. And the second question, unfortunately, is outside the purview of today's topic, but you can ask me that either on LinkedIn or in the final Q&A session today if we have some time left. Next one. Would we be liable to pay tax on our assets while filing income tax return for first time? Uh, Sadiq, Pakistan is one of the few countries, Sadiq, uh, while uh, let me just tell you, it's a good question. Uh, Sadiq, Pakistan is one of the few countries in the world which does not have a wealth tax. The wealth tax in Pakistan was abolished almost a decade ago. So unlike uh, UK and many other countries, we don't have those taxes on assets. Next one. What if someone skipped to enter details of bank account Khalid, Muhammad Khalid? Well, it would depend what they have skipped just entering the bank account or totally not mentioning it. There would be implication depending on the gravity. So the more serious the offense, the most uh, serious would be the implications. Next one. Uh, whether tax will be detected on deceased account Baba Ali. You can't run away from the tax man if uh, a defaulter is deceased. Uh, by law, tax is to be deducted from their estate before it is transferred on to those uh, who are about to inherit it. Um, those people who are exempt, uh, will their name is shown in ATL. If not, how will they appear in All right, banking answered. system? Next Suleiman. One. What do you think how someone could help a country who is only a tax filer but not within taxable income threshold, just like a salaried person? Who asked this Wakas question? Ahmed. Because it's a very, very good question, a very intelligent question. Uh, you know what, even if you are not uh, earning an amount where you'll be paying any taxes or serious taxes, by being just a filer, you are helping document the economy. When you are coming uh, within the tax embed and documenting the economy, what is happening is the people who are dealing with you, there is an indirect check on them too and they might actually be liable to pay more taxes. So even if you are not liable to pay taxes by just filing the return, 
uh, by way of documenting the economy and providing the regulator a mechanism to check the counterparties to you, you are helping the country and the economy. Next. Nizam, you can ask the next question. The taxes, the tax rates on rental income is very high and adjustments not allowed for individual question mark. Uh, please advise how can we do tax planning in this area, Abdul Rahim? Abdul Rahim, that's a brilliant question, but unfortunately it's both a lengthy question and outside the scope of today's session. So again, try it in the last Q&A if we have time left I'll address that. Otherwise, send me a message on LinkedIn. Um, next one. Okay, I'll read a couple of questions while we get Nizam back. Tariq Khan has asked a very good question. He said, exempt from filing income tax return, would it also mean that these people are exempt from tax altogether, meaning no department can withhold any income tax from that person? No, Tariq, it does not mean that. It simply means that you are not required to file your income tax return. You can still choose to file your income tax return. The withholding taxes would still be applicable unless you fall within the exempt category by way of one of the specific laws. Okay. Um, what are the implementations of income tax for non residents This has already been answered. Uh, then we have Sandeep Kumar Rajpal. What is the limit? Of, okay, that has been answered. And uh, Radhid Hanifast, being a member of ACCA, which is a professional body, are we also required to file income tax return? Um, yes, you would be, as per the law. Amir Ahmed Danish, whether Gilgit Baltistan Council Board of Revenue is issuing ATL. That is now being uh, merged. The names are included within FPR's ATL Danish. So that's a good question. Um, then we have a lot of comments. And then, uh, yes, definitely as government. Okay. Uh, I'm just scrolling through your comments right now. Just give me a second. Okay. Some very interesting comments. The penalty is very low, so should avail it. Uh, wait for another amnesty scheme. Wakash Shafiq, are you so certain, Wakash? The times seems to be changing, but you never know. Uh, the deadlines previously were meaningless. Okay, okay, okay. Um, there are numerous person who are filing income tax return. However, if a person file their return, they should be filer. Uh, I'm not sure, Hassan, you made a comment or asked a question, but that sounds about right, if that was a comment. Taha Skri, if the, okay. So we have a question now, back to them. Can you make clear how withholding tax is adjustable? Shajil Muhammad. Uh, Shajil, when income tax return is filed, any withholding taxes are adjusted in that. We'll be seeing that in a moment while we'll be filing the income tax return. Anam Aves, if a person obtained NTN long time back is uh, and is not a resident of Pakistan anymore, is that person liable to file the return? Anam, the answer is both yes and no. The person, if they don't have any Pakistan source income, assets, bank account, etc., and they update their current status to FPR, they can even re request them to deregister them, then they would not need to file that. However, if they don't do that until they hold the NTN, they would be required to file their income tax return. Okay, so next one 
is Mohammad Hassan Khan. The note state lower tax rate as much as 100% less on certain transactions. However, is in profit on debt under the final taxation regime. Uh, that's a good observation. There are different categories. 7B falls under that, but there are certain other types which might not. Abdul Ahad, if a person is a widow and she has uh, overseas income but doesn't file return, is her income taxable or exempt? Uh, if the widow has overseas income, uh, now there would be a few questions. Uh, whether she has overseas assets, whether she has assets in Pakistan, on this it would de uh, depend whether she needs to file the income tax return or not. But any foreign source income would not be taxable in Pakistan if it's repatriated through proper banking channel. Uh, it, however, would depend if there is a double taxation treaty between the two countries. Raza Hassan, give an example of adjustable withholding tax tax on banking transactions. Tariq Khan, sir, I'm working in Chitral and I'm originally from Sawat. So I have heard that Chitral comes in provincially administered tribal area rules. My employer is based in Islamabad and they withheld my tax. My question is, am I exempt from tax? If I am, then how can I get exemption certificate from RTO Peshawar? Thank you, sir. Okay. That's a very interesting question, Tariq. Uh, Tariq, the thing is this, uh, you need to differentiate between sales tax and income tax. We are talking about income tax return. So income tax falls within the purview of FBR, Federal Board of Revenue, is the regulatory body that administers and manages it. Post 18 amendment, sales tax on services, not the goods, only sales tax on services has been given to the provinces. So now we have Punjab Revenue Authority, Sin Revenue Board, uh, KP Revenue Authority, Balochistan Zone Body. So all these bodies are administering the sales tax on services within the jurisdiction of a province. They are different. The tax that is deducted from the, your salary is advanced income tax, is income tax, and that is administered by FPR. So there is no categorization of the provincial body within this. I hope that answers your question. Babar Ali, where to treat withholding tax deducted uh, on uh, mobile load? You'll see that Babar in a bit. Mohammed Asim, I filed my return on 29th February, uh, February, whereas um, as per FPR, last date was 28 February. So then you need to pay the fine depending on your status, whether you are individual, AOP or company, it may be just as low as a thousand rupees. Pizan Khan is tax withheld against banking transactions from non-resident refundable. No, it can be adjustable if that non-resident is registered, has some Pakistan sourced income, is filing the income tax return. Sayyid Muhammad Wasi Hussain Kazmi. Oh, good to see you, Kazmi Sahib, again. Uh, sir, if a company is deducting income tax on any payment against resident of Azad Jammu and Kashmir, will they have to deposit this tax in FPR? Yes, they will need to. Umar Maksud, what is the deregistration process for sole proprietorship? Already answered. Pezan Hassan Javed, please elaborate the concept of fiscal year and ATL list upgradation. Pezan, this has already been done in detail. I'll try to do a summary, a recap at the end of the session, and the recording of the session with, uh, will also be available. Um, just wait till the end of the session. If you still feel you are not totally clear on the concept, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn. Mohsin Ikram, why the non-filer term has been changed? Uh, this has already been answered. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, person exempted from filing. Uh, okay, that has been answered. Um, Ahmad Atta has asked, sir, if we pay the penalty for late tax return, then in how many days a person again is included in the ATL immediately in the next, next ATL upgradation? Okay, uh, Radhid Hanif, if a window, uh, if a widow have no prop, uh, have 
has if a widow has number of properties in her name still she will be exempt from filing uh, income tax return well it depends whether she has any income or not if she has no income no taxable income and doesn't fall in any of the other requirements then yes if she has properties if she has taxable income then just by being virtue of a widow she can't claim exemption Vakas Ahmed asked, please explain the conditions for a resident and non-resident persons according to recent changes. It has been explained. Um, Muhammad Hamza, maybe the question is irrelevant, but I need to confirm this, sir. Okay, uh, what is it? Is it the, true that FPR has started to issue refunds? <laughs> uh, yeah, the mechanism has started. Some refunds have been issued, but they will have largely been focused on the export oriented businesses. Osama Tivana, penalty for ATL for companies is also 1000 rupees. No, 10,000. Zagam Abbas, hello Zagam, good to hear from you. Are non for profit registered under section 42 required to file the return? Uh, Nizam, can you hear me? Are you back? I can, sir. Uh, Nizam, can you um, open the mic of Zeram? He has been a long standing member and attend a lot of our sessions. I would like him to ask the question himself. Zeram, uh, Nizam is about to unmute your mic so you can ask your question. After the question has been asked, uh, could you, Nizam, please mute the mic again? His mic is uh, mic is unmuted. Uh, Zagam Vas, you may ask your question. Uh, hello, Umar. How are you? Assalamu alaikum. I'm very well. How are you? Good to hear from you. I'm good. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity to speak here. Um, I just uh, wanted a, a clarity over this. Uh, Section 42 registered uh, company, hmm. you can say it uh, a non for profit organization. So, are they required to file their taxes or they are totally exempt from that? Like they have the exemption certificate, but I'm not sure if they are required to file that or. Okay, uh, there are two parts to your question. I'll answer them both. Uh, first of all, as far as the income tax return is concerned, they are not exempted. They have to file the income tax return. Now the exemption certificate that you receive, Zegam, that is not about not filing the income tax return. That is about certain taxes that are not applicable on not-for-profit. So those taxes would not be levied on not-for-profit, but a not-for-profit registered under section 42 would still need to file their income tax return. It might be that they have no tax liability at all. It might be that they have some excess tax that was withheld, uh, maybe when they were not issued the exemption certificate, that might be adjustable, no matter what the case is, but they are required to file their income tax return annually. Hope that answers the question. So that brings us to the next one, Ali Aslam. If the widow is running her own business and substantial incomes, uh still she is exempt from filing the return not in that case ali she would need to file the income tax return sardar muhammad ali muhayyuddin mashallah that's quite a big name sardar sahab if person pays fine and his name appears in atl however at the time of filing withholding tax return fpr system automatically applies non-filer tax rate how to deal with this well it might be that uh, the person filed the income tax return after the withholding tax was deducted so whatever withholding tax was deducted would be now be declared in the income tax return and they'll claim an adjustability against that Mohsen Ikram do I get any relief on loss on capital disposal we are about to see that when we file the income tax return Muhammad Hamza sir isn't it 600,000 now the btl limit uh, no uh, it's different for salaried individual we were referring to the business individual uh, 
Radit asked the same question, uh, the BTL limit that's answered. Suleiman Salim, those people who are exempt, will their name be shown in ATL? No. If not, how they will they appear in banking system by a banking system? Uh, you must mean how would they appear as a filer in the banking system? For that, Suleiman, they would need to file their income tax return. So I think we have asked, answered a lot of questions. Uh, so Nizam, if you could mark that the last question that we answered was by Suleiman Salim, and the next one we have to answer is from Zahra Shah. So I can just go back to the presentation and we'll come back to the question in the next Q and A break. Are you with me, Nizam? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So the next one is the actual practical demonstration of filing an income tax return and the common issues and i actually wanted to show you how it's done practically rather than just talking about it but one of the biggest challenge was that we had filed returns of all our clients and time anyway i spoke with uh, one of the client who was kind enough to allow us to share his detail or uh, to show our demo um, however the return was already filed but we had opened um, a revised return format, which is pretty much the same. Uh, this is so you can actually see how things are done and can get a taste of the practical aspects of it. So let's do that now. So I've already logged in. Uh, what you need to do is you go on FPR's website, which is fpr.gov.pk. Then you click on this link for IRIS income tax and you'll have this tab open. You'll enter the login ID and password, which I already have. And then you'll click on login and you'll come in the system. So here we logged in and we are in the system. So when you are filing the income tax return for the first time, you'll go up here on the declaration tab you'll click on the drop down menu and you'll choose one of the tax return that is applicable to you if you are a salaried individual who has only salary income or salary is more than 50 percent of his or her total income you can click on this link if you are a business or a person who is only dealing in areas where he or she is only ending up paying the statement of final taxation then you don't need to file a detailed tax return you can simply click on statement of final taxation if you are a newer business in a transitional period and want to file the tax return for incomplete or transitional year you would need to click on this link for the incomplete or transitional year tax return and this is the normal return for individual aop or company that is where you would normally cling, uh, click on and then after that you would also need to file the wealth statement if you are an individual and that would be by clicking on this link 1162 wealth statement if you are a non-resident pakistan or region person having no pakistan source income you can simply click on this simple performer fill in some basic details File that instead of filing the whole tax return and your name would appear on the ATL. You would need to file 116A1 foreign income and asset statement for resident individuals. Uh, if you have foreign source income and assets and you are resident in Pakistan. Um, last two are not very common, but just for the sake of completeness, a non-resident ship owner or charter would need to file this one if they have any affairs in Pakistan, but they are not resident in Pakistan. And similarly, an aircraft owner or charter who is a non-resident in Pakistan, but may have assets or income in Pakistan would need to file a return by clicking on this. So let's assuming that you clicked on this. Uh, let's see what you'll be getting into. So we can go in the draft section, click on declaration, click on the format and click on edit. So this is what a text return looks like for those individuals who are not usually uh, dealing with filing the text return. I'm sure many of you would be filing the text return and I've conducted uh, countless sessions 
on filing the income tax return uh, from ACCS platform and even for corporates and other institutions otherwise. Uh, but for those of our participants who are new to this arena, this is how it looks like. The only difference is this says 1146. This is a revised income tax return draft as I've shared since the tax return of everyone was already filed. This was the only way I could show you this tax return in real. Um, unless one of you want to volunteer who hasn't filed their tax return yet and then I can show you the 11442. So anyone who wants to volunteer their details, uh, uh, that would need to be someone who hasn't filed their income tax return till now. Okay, Najam is saying they can't hear me. Um, can you guys hear me? Okay, great. So Najam, unfortunately, it seems like the problem is at your end. So anybody who is comfortable sharing their tax details and who have not filed their income tax return yet can share that. Uh, you have 30 seconds. If nobody shares in 30 seconds, then I would assume that nobody wants to and we'll just continue with this one. Okay, uh, most of the people have filed Zile, Huma and Zahra have not filed. So if you guys want to share your details and are comfortable with them being shown here, then please feel free to share and I would log in and show that. Anyone who is willing to share would need to share their Iris login ID and password in the Q&A box where you are typing your questions. Okay, I think uh, the time is about to be up uh, and we got the first one. Okay. Don't just say I volunteer. Rizvi sub, just type the ID password. So we have the first one. Um, but you can see my return. Obviously, Ramdhatan, everyone would be able to see. That's the thing. Only share if you are comfortable in sharing that. It's not required, it's your call. We have managed a detail, but if you are comfortable sharing, you can. So I've got details of uh, several people. Uh, it is obviously confidential, so I would just freeze my screen for a minute while I log in, so their login detail is secure, and I would go with the first one who shared his detail, that is Hafiz Fessel. Just bear with me, let me just log in and I'll come back and reconnect you guys with the screen. Okay guys, we have logged in and I would like to thank Hafiz Fessel on behalf of everyone and everyone else too, including Shabir, Hanif, uh, Zahra, and everyone else who shared their details. Uh, we'll just continue with the first one that was shared of Hafiz up. Thank you for sharing your details. So um, I'll quickly have a look whether the text return for 19 was filed. No, it was not filed. I clicked on the completed task and just confirmed. So I look in the draft section whether there is a draft. There is a draft for 2018, but 2018 was already filed. Okay, so the draft is not relevant. I'll go in the inbox and see um, whether there is a notice to file 2019. Yes, there is. So what would happen now because the due date has passed, and um, the tax return was not filed. Whose detail have you shared, Hafiz Uh Have you taken a permission from them? Because I can see it's not your detail. Ethically, we need to be sure that we have the permission from the person we are about to work on. Yes, sure, sir. 
okay so half a sub has taken the permission that's fine so as we can see the text uh, return was not filed within the due time so what happened here is that fpr has sent a notice under section 114 subsection 4 to file the return of income for complete year which is 2019 so now we can't go to declaration and click on this tab instead we have to file the return by way of this notice so how we do that we'll click on this link we'll click on view or we can directly click on reply it's the same either way and it's asking us which return we want to file 114 subsection 4 which is a return for the complete year but a normal tax return or 115 subsection 5 which is again for the complete tax year but a statement of final taxation so which one do we want to file half a sub is uh, this person your client or friend dealing only in matters that pertain to final taxation or does he fall under normal tax regime so half a sub has confirmed the normal tax regime so we'll select 114 subsection 4 in this case and the tax return would open here you go okay so now um, what they have done is while the text return does look a bit complicated but they have arranged that and with that they have also done something very good which i'll be referring to in a bit so first of all you can see the first tab here where my cursor is is employment so if there is any income from salary that needs to be mentioned here let's say this particular person is uh, actually earning um, two lakh per month so his total annual salary was 24 lakh okay then we have two tabs about subject amounts uh, exempt from tax subject to fix final tax and amount subject to normal tax anyone should I write anything in this section in this tab that is appearing which is saying I need to mention any amount which is either exempt from tax or subject to a fix or final tax anyone no not in exempt total income is taxable Anam yes medical exemptions Ishan medical allowance medical 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 okay 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 i'll give you a very quick hint if you are unsure there is one way um i don't normally advise that it is like a quick tip i'm sharing it but don't make it a habit actually go through my lectures on income tax ordinance get used to the taxation law but if you are in a rush and you are not sure what you can quickly do in addition to referring to the taxation laws click on this tax chargeable and payments there you can see that we have tabs for adjustable tax and final fixed minimum average relevant tax so click on adjustable tax and find out whether the thing you are clicking uh, looking for falls under adjustable tax if it falls under adjustable tax that's normal tax regime if it falls under final fixed minimum average then it would appear in the center section so we can see that salary for federal government employees under section 149 salary for provincial employees corporate sector employees or other employees would all fall within this area however we are aware that there is a certain limit which is exempt from taxation so the amount that is exempt from tax the btl would be mentioned and the rest of the amount would be left and then we'll click on the calculate button and iris would do the rest of the calculation if we have any other perquisites or expenditure reimbursements we would mention them here now let's assume that this person also has some property there is no limit I mean there is no law that if you are an employee you can't have any other source of business you can't have a property that you have let out you can so let's assume that this person also has a property from where they are earning their uh, rental income so let's say that the rent received or receivable are um, 18 lakh 
so one and a half lakh per month one tenth of the amount not adjustable against rent that is normally uh, what you refer to as the pagri let's assume that this is an ongoing rental so this is not applicable any forfeited deposit under a contract for sale of property would also appear here why does it make any sense why would a forfeited deposit under a contract for sale of property appear as income from property anyone okay you guys have 30 seconds token money property income this is income of landlord prem kumar um, yes okay uh, nabil ikram sandeep fahad muslim raza rizvi muzaffar ali sheikh thank you all for responding well the concept is very simple and being qualified accountants you should be of all the people able to understand it if a person received a deposit for the sale of a property and the sale didn't actually go ahead and that deposit is forfeited that person now has that income they now have that amount with them that is their income so that has to be assessed and the tax has to be charged on that if the sale actually went ahead then they would calculate the gain or loss on the disposal and they'll charge uh, pay any capital gain accordingly um, depending on the value of the property and whether they are uh, on the uh, sale or the purchase side they would also pay the advance income tax but in the scenario where the sale did not go ahead it was cancelled any deposit that was forfeited and received by the potential seller is the income of the seller so there is a tax charge on that hope that makes uh, uh, sense so let's say that uh, they received a deposit of 3 lakh 19 thousand uh, but the property sale couldn't go ahead so that is also their income then any deductions well the law was changed uh i never put in uh, okay we are receiving some questions we'll be answering the questions in a bit okay forfeited deposit under contract for sale of property is done now we are talking about the deductions against rent so what can be deductions if you are an individual there are not any automated deduction there used to be one by fifth uh, that you can take as a repair and maintenance charge not anymore in the case of a company you still can so any deduction against your rent can be uh, if there is an actual damage uh, there is an actual material expense that incurred you can put that in deductions otherwise there would be no deduction per se so that's the income from rental i know you might have some questions just write them down and don't worry i'll be answering them let's assume that this person was also working uh, in uh, a business uh, the employment was in private sector so they allowed him to do a side business uh, just so we can quickly have a look at all the various sections uh, the returns would likely be similar it would be a bit different in the case of a company uh, i have a detailed session on filing the income tax returns of uh, corporate entities which you can see on my uh, social media networks uh, it, the recording i am sure is available on my youtube channel you can search that by my name omar zahir me too uh, but likely the concept are the same so let's have a look if the business is uh, of trading items or manufacturing then you will enter all the relevant figures here just have a quick look what does this form this pro forma look like let me give you a hint let me help you it's related to a financial statement the answer is a financial statement that you have studied practice and mastered a lot
cash flow statement salman atik no salman you don't have accounting depreciation and cash flow statement income statement income statement pnl sumaiya fatma walid ahmed uh, junaid ikbal akbar punjani saqib latif ali aslam irfan ali uh, fezan khan sardar mohammed ali mohayuddin and everyone else who is commenting now you are all correct so basically what you are looking at is a taxation version of your pnl profit and loss account or your income statement so you'll enter any cost of goods sold opening stock ad purchases uh, you have your admin selling expenses salary wages you have fuel you basically this is your trading account not the entire pnl so this would be calculating your gp it would end up calculating your gp gross profit and then you'll have a separate tab to enter your management and selling expenses any salaries for those staff repair and maintenance communication utility bills traveling rent rates taxes cess charges um stationery repair maintenance advertisement insurance professional charges profit on that brokerage indirect expenses irrecoverable debts obsolete stock accounting loss sale on tangibles accounting loss or sale uh, on sale of assets accounting depreciation amortization then any inadmissible or admissible deductions as per the taxation laws would be added back and i told you that they have done quite a few good things which i'll be talking about the first one being here they have mentioned for you all the things that needs to be added back which are inadmissible and they have given the relevant sections under which they need to be added back so for example you are not sure of the unrecognized unapproved funds so you can refer to the section 21 subsection e have a look there and see whether yours fall under that category and then they have admissible deductions accounting gains on sale of tangible uh, tax loss on sale of intangible etc any unabsorbed tax depreciation from previous year which can be entered here and this would brings us to bring us to any other adjustment which are basically the unadjusted losses that might be carried forward from the last 6 years and then we'll have the business asset equity and liability just have a quick look which financial statement does this performa resemble to so we are getting all the right answers here uh, let me just quickly open that mashallah the correct answers are coming so quickly uh, well we have close to four and a half hundred people locked in right now so uh, i wanted to take everyone's name uh seems like might not be possible so i'll just take as many as i can uh mohammad farhad mohammad usman ali uh sajad sheikh you are all right mohammad ali hajra aziz uh, mohammad suhail iqbal sanaullah zishan um, jamil ilyas anis uh, uzair siddiqui mohammad azam mohammad amir mohammad hassan ashraf um kashif makpool uh, ali raza karmani mohammad hamad so this is what you used to call the balance sheet or as is referred to now statement of financial position so well done guys and everyone else who commented rightly to and i can see some people mentioned statement of cash flows and cash flow statement not at all guys come on just recall how can this be a cash flow statement we are talking about the assets the liabilities anyway this is more like a balance sheet so you being the accountants i don't need to tell you uh, we can just plug in some numbers uh, for the sake of telling this you want actually do that this would be based on actual data this is being done as an example so 15 million for land 2 and a half million or 25 million for properties uh building plant 
machinery and equipment uh, can be 10 million uh, stock and spare can be 5 million 5 lakh in fact cash and cash equivalent should at least be 5 million um, and any other asset can be 2 million and uh, uh, we need to put in the cash cash equivalent is done stock and spares advanced deposits okay and uh, how much was the capital uh, 40 million and trade creditors can be 10 million and uh -huh. so trade creditors can be seven and a half million long-term borrowing 10 million and then our balance sheet is balanced now so this was in the case we were dealing with manufacturing or trading of items but as we all know that services is a very important segment of business now services actually is one of the fastest growing segments of business in pakistan's economy and not just pakistan's economy but world economy the knowledge economy the financial services they are all based on services so if you are dealing in professional services you'll click on the tab of other revenues under business and enter the relevant figures here so for example, let's say you are providing uh, professional services which are subject to normal taxation and you are providing uh, two and a half, uh, oh, that's too big. Two and a half million, 25 million should be fine. Okay, you'll click on calculate and iris will fill in the rest of the numbers for you there is a very important feature here which i would like you to pay attention to um, if you have been filing returns year on year and want to import figures from the previous year uh, because they are largely the same and there are only a few changes you can click on this uh, button here and that would actually fill the return uh, inculcated with figures from the prior year and you can then simply amend them as you want to Anyway, so this was the business segment. We'll then move on to the capital assets. If you have disposed of any capital asset and there has been any gain or loss, you would enter the figures here. Uh, this is bifurcated between long and short term. You'll then move on to the other sources. If you have invested in Baboot certificate or a pensioner or a uh, someone who has a shohda family benefit account you'll enter your income here any royalties you have received any profit on that any other receipts any ground rent any annuity or pension you are receiving they would all come under other sources of income this would bring us to the foreign sources and agricultural income if you have any foreign source income you would enter that here uh, before i comment on that aren't foreign remittance exempt from taxation hello anyone so you can actually type in your feedback in the q a section where you were asking the question yes 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 okay so if it is tax exempt why are we entering it here why is there a section for foreign income Only IT related are exempt, profit on TDRs, business income. Uh, you guys are simply amazing. Your responses are coming at the speed of lightning and it is simply not possible to read them, uh, but it's great. I've read a few responses which are correct and they have disappeared and the other responses are coming. Okay, let me just clarify it for you. And if you have answered this correctly, you can actually pat yourself on your backs uh, as an appreciation from me. And if you were confused, you can correct yourself. So basically, this is not foreign remittance. This is foreign income. The foreign income is taxable. 
to what extent would depend on the double taxation treaties that government of Pakistan may have that with the foreign countries but foreign income is a different ball game foreign income is not foreign remittance it's the proceeds of a foreign business or the services that you have provided by lieu of which you have received foreign income if there is any such income you would enter that here and similarly if you have any agricultural income and you have paid any agricultural income tax on that you would pay here uh, you would mention the paid amounts here and the agricultural income here there is a very important thing that you should remember agricultural taxes are largely in the provincial domain however there are some token income taxes that are levied at the federal level so you have to mention that here and now the provincial and the federal boards taxation regulators are working on actually amalgamating their data and collaborating with each other something that acc has also advocated for a long time so in future they can corroborate these figures because what people do is that they declare a lot of agricultural income to save taxation at the federal level but they are not say paying the provincial taxes on the similar income income level so such collaboration between federal and provincial taxation authorities would close uh, this lacuna and this uh, kind of um, tax avoidance uh, or tax scamming scheme for the future now that this is out of the way and we are moving on to the last segment of our tax return which is very crucial i would like to take some questions for next five to ten minutes uh, and then we'll conclude the income tax return so nizam are you with me yes sir could you please continue the questions from where we left <laughs> We have a question from Ram Ratan. Uh, please specify option for shop owner. Option for shop owner. Uh, uh, Ram, you'll have to clarify your question. Uh, I'm not sure what you have really asked here. Which option are you referring to? Next one, please. Okay, I'll ask the uh, audience to ask questions so I can put it forth, please. Mm, you'll ask the audience? Uh, why? You have the questions already. Uh, nothing from the recent uh, layover. No, no, that's okay. Just continue from asking the questions where we left. Just continue asking them. We need to answer all the questions, at least as many as we can. Or is asking why they have provided balance sheet here. We can insert the details in the wealth statement. Okay, who asked this question? Naresh Kumar. Naresh. Uh, you only file a will statement if you are an individual and you file the balance sheet data if you are a business So if you are a business you won't be filing the will statement You will be filing a will statement in your capacity as an individual I hope that answers the question and another thing which I should clarify If you look at this return um, They have modified the format of the return in this year we are yet to cover this, but you can see the wealth statement is incorporated within the tax return now. So if you are filing one of these newer tax returns, which have been introduced in this tax year and even in the last one, so you'll be uh, actually filling one continuous form and the wealth statement would also be incorporated within it. However, when you'll be filing a revised return, you'll need to file separately the income tax return and the wealth statement revised ones for that. But as for the Naresh question, uh, the question asked by Naresh Kumar, uh, I've already clarified the businesses do not need to file the wealth statement, individuals do. Hence, the businesses need to file the data uh, of their business assets and liability, and hence having the business asset equity and liability section there. Next one, please. 
Mohammad Khalid is asking, what will be the treatment while filing ITR for vehicle purchased on leasing arrangement? Just wait, we are about to cover the wealth statement and you'll see how we'll treat that. We are to cover the depreciation schedule too. So you'll be seeing that either way, whether it's a business proposition or the individual proposition in both of the scenarios, we will be covering the treatment. Don't worry, next one. Uh, where will account receivable treated in account, income statement? Income statement account receivable would not come in income statement. First of all, we are filing tax return, not the income statement. These different sections resemble the trading account, the profit and loss account, and the balance sheet. And the account receivable would come here. Any other assets in your balance sheet? Hope that answers the question. Next one. Nanita uh, Jay Nachnani. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, where will we enter foreign remittance in return? You would not enter that in the income tax statement. You would enter that in what we are about to cover. Okay, let me show you since you have asked the question. When we'll be doing the reconciliation, there is a segment for foreign remittance. This is where the remittance is actually disclosed. Here, 7035. Hope that answers the question. Next one, please. Okay, this question is a bit confusing. Okay, uh, what are the te techniques for tax tax avoidance? It's what a good question. It's a good question. What that, are the tax? You are, uh, you are saying somebody yeah. asking me the text from more tax avoidance is a good question. Yeah, sure. It is. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, look, the question that you have asked is uh, vast. Uh, we can't possibly cover that today. We actually do uh, detailed week long sessions on text planning. Then you have to ask a generic question. It's a good question that you are interested in learning about the text planning. However, uh, it depends on the scenario that you might be talking about. And then there are endless possibilities. So for example, if we are talking about a service segment business, that would be different. If we are talking about industry or manufacturing, that would be different. Then within the sector, there are several subsectors. If we are talking about service sector, which is focused on IT services, that would be different. If we are talking about education services or financial services, that would be different. Okay. Can you hear me guys? Okay guys, so anyway, it was exact scenario again my answer would be the same send in a suggestion that you would like to have sessions on text planning and you can mention about which segments and inshallah we'll do that or otherwise if you have very specific uh, query which is not relevant to the session today send me a message on linkedin next one is um for freelancing income although it is exempt for tax purposes as if someone is salaried and also have a freelancing income, how to treat it? The Jamal Hussain. If someone has salary and freelancing income, how to treat that? Freelancing income is exempt is what he said. Uh, what are implications for freelancing income? Well, Although it is exempt for tax purposes. No, no, it's not exempt. It's your taxable income. You are supposed to declare that. Okay, and uh, as if someone is salaried and also having have freelancing income. So, so he has two kinds them. of income, salaried income and freelancing. We just showed you that you can have multiple sources of income. It doesn't mean that you have to declare only one. You would be declaring them all.
okay have we discussed uh, agriculture income uh, and where would it be uh, included upon we, we just discussed that at farm were you not connected or did you take a quick sneaking break and just came back see we caught you via your question next one Okay, Mohammed Hamad um, ask a question where we account for income uh, from NSC. I've just shown that Hamad. Okay, guys, I'm showing again. Please pay attention. Don't take sneaking breaks because if you were already attending the session with full attention, you couldn't have possibly missed it. Here are other sources. Um, um, hang on, hang on, Nizam. My apologies. This this question is, has been asked at five twenty three. My apologies. Um, okay, that's so fine. We are looking. Um, that's fine. It's okay. Let me just. Okay, show, so looking for questions. Let me just show them anyway. So. Okay, so here we are. So any BEPUT certificates or pensioner benefit account income would be declared here and any agricultural income would be declared here. So I hope that answers the question. Next one. Hello. Um, Omar Saeed asked if in a tax year one month income is exempt foreign IT related and rest of all months are local salaried income. Will that first month, one month still be exempt? So if I understand that correctly, he's saying that for one month he was providing IT services which were exempt and for the remaining 11 months, he had a salaried income which was taxable. Is that what he asked? I'll repeat the question. Uh, if in a tax year, one month income is exempt for an IT related mm -hmm. and rest of all months are local salary income, mm -hmm. will that one month still be exempt? Yes. Next. Okay, uh, if someone is giving services as software development and receive foreign income, will it be exempt? Yes, if they are receiving it through proper banking channel and they have the export license. All right. Next one. Okay, Fazan Javed, Hassan Javed is asking, what if someone has not disclosed his or her freelancing income, foreign or foreign income, uh, what would be the implications? Uh, also, please confirm whether limit has been extended to 25,000 pounds from 5K. Okay, uh, so if someone is not disclosing, what would be the implications? Um... As a professional, uh, we would always advise against that. The implications would be same as in the case of any other tax fraud or misdeclaration. So depending on the severity, it can range from fines to all the way to prosecution in the worst case scenarios. Uh, which limit are you referring to from five or 25,000? Please elaborate. Next question. Okay, Noresh again asks tax credit on investments in mutual funds and insurance, some some under the same section. What if a person invests in both to the maximum limit? If a person invests? Uh, 
Okay, I think we have lost Nizam, so I'll just take charge of the questions myself and start answering them. I'll try to go backwards, so we'll answer the most recent questions first. Um, Umar has asked, while filing uh, salary income, I did not insert 600,000 exempt slab in exempt income proportion, but it still calculates the correct amount in computation. Is it necessary to feed in? Uh, first of all, Umar, good to have you here. Uh, secondly, I'll show you that by example in a bit. Uh, Muhammad Ijaz asked, will it increase the exemption limit with some percentage? Uh, not sure what you are referring to Ijaz, please elaborate. Sikandar Ishtaya, KCC membership paid when refunded from employer. Is this taxable income of the employee? Yes, because that's basically a benefit in kind. Muhammad Mohsin Bilal, could we have handout of property income related information, please? Uh, sure, Sayyid Fasi Hashmi, where can I disclose income under share trading? Uh, you have seen uh, the income from other sources. And then we'll be covering the next section of adjustable, non-adjustable taxation, where the taxation deduction and the income total received from dividend income would be disclosed. Bilal Tariq, dear sir, can you please share income tax regulation for filing the return? If you were seeing my screen, that's what I was exploring. I'm about to give you the direct link. Mohammed Zuhair Zubair, what do you do if a person is receiving foreign support remittance from family? Uh, receive it through formal banking channels and up to the allowable limit, there are no tax implications. Uh, Mutib Nazir, a person whose salary is not taxable, should he, she submit tax return for it? Uh, if they are, do not fall in any of the other required categories, then no. Because Muti, we covered detailed categories and requirements in the beginning that it's not just having taxable income that would require you to become a filer. There are a whole lot of other requirements. If you do not have uh, taxable income, but you fall in one of the other categories, you might still need to file your tax return. Fahad Sahid, whether we can claim interest on house loan as tax credit, if yes, then please refer to section. Uh, interest on house loan as tax credit? Um, you've lost me there, Fahad. What context are you referring to? Fazan Hassan Javed. What if someone has not disclosed? I think that was already answered. Rashid Hanif, Mr. Uh, Nizam should sit with you if possible. Rashid, social distancing. <laughs> On a serious note, we are also uh, working from home, all of us. So that's not possible, but uh, it's okay. These minor things can happen and I've taken charge now. So hopefully you won't be feeling any discomfort now. Uh, okay, so next one. Sayyid Fasi Hashmi, interest paid to bank on house loan is deductible or not, sir? No. It comes in reconciliation. It's not deductible per se. Mirza Beg for non-resident Pakistanis, will you cover tax returns? Um, Mirza Beg, I have covered that in a detailed session. It's a simple form. If you do not have any Pakistan source income, you are just giving a declaration, a listing of your foreign assets. Abdul Ghani Ansari, question on tax statement of financial position, which value of land should we insert? Lease value on paper or the market value? The lease value on paper or FPR value. Uh, can we reveal land or building as well in subsequent year? Uh, Mr. Zaheer, is it true that if someone file late return, they will automatically qualify for audit? Very good question, Abdul Ghani Ansari Sahab. Quite a few questions. Um, okay. So which value should you declare? If you have FPR value, you'll declare that. If you don't have FPR value, you'll declare the purchase price, the cost price on paper. Uh, is it true whether someone who file return late would automatically qualify for audit? That's what used to happen, 2140, but that section is now obsolete, so it's not applicable anymore. Doesn't happen now. Is there a limit on receiving foreign remittance from abroad from uh, family members, Prem Kumar? No limit on receiving the foreign remittance from abroad, but yes, there is a limit uh, after which you have to disclose the source why you are receiving these funds. Siddiqui, uh, Siddiq Ahmed, declaring the wealth statement for the first time and disclosing property will FPR not 
ask about the source of income for the property under section triple one they can ask there's nothing limiting them but normally they don't unless you are a very big fish amara sheikh mm -hmm. Question I received an email from SACP that the company must file income tax returns for all of its employees My question is that is there any such compulsion under income tax ordinance or is it a corporate compliance issue? Uh, Amara you can share the directive with me basically SACP is encouraging companies to educate their employees and file returns for them uh, I'm not sure if this is actually a requirement for them, but uh, you can just whatsapp me um, I actually saw your WhatsApp messages, but had the CPD session and a few other meetings. So hopefully I'll tie up with you tomorrow. Uh, share with me the notice and I'll guide you accordingly. Ali Raza Kermani, can a salaried person claim ACC subscription fee as a deductible expense against salary income? Ali, there are no expenses against salary income. First thing. But yes, in reconciliation, you can show that as an expense. If yes, kindly refer to the SRO. That's already been answered. Zahra Shah is CGT adjustable. Um, Zahra adjustable against what? Uh, Muhammad Zuhair Zubair, what is the allowable limit? In what context, Zuhair? Uh, Nuruddin Bihmani, how to treat graduate and provident fund. You'll declare them uh, and appropriate taxes would uh, be applicable normally on graduates that are given to you on retirement. There are no tax implications. Uh, Ali Shah Nawaz Kazi, uh, but definitely it would depend whether that was an approved fund or not and what were the actual modalities. Ali Shah Nawaz Kazi, why Behpood NSC income is not exempt and also the pension account up to 50 lakh with NSC is not exempt. Uh, well, Ali, uh, we can always argue whether a law is a good law or the bad law, but when a law is in existence, we have to comply with that. Fezan Hassan, uh, I would like to answer your questions in more detail, but um, uh, because the time is limited and we have so many questions, I'm trying to answer everyone to the point. So hopefully that is addressing your query. If not, you can uh, even after the session, send me a message on LinkedIn or other social media. So Arsalan Raza is saying, sir, if we have saving account, which we are receiving interest income, we have to report it in other sources. Yes, we should report it. Muzammil Kholia. Uh, can you please explain that where should we enter freelancing income in return filing? Uh, other sources. Irfanali, I suggest the comment and question tab should be separate. They already are. Uh, oh, comment. That's a good idea. We can uh, send that. Muhammad Ijaz, will it increase the exemption limit with some percentage? I think this must be a continuation of some question that was previously asked. Uh, Sikandar Ishtiaq, ACCA membership when paid when refunded from employer is taxable income of employee. Yes, it is Okay, so Muhammad Mansoor Khan is asking I gave a loan to my friend before registering myself as a taxpayer He will return the same amount this month, which is around 8 million rupees But now I am registered how to tackle this issue. No issue. Uh, when you'll file your income tax return, if the amount is outstanding, declare it as per se. If you have already received it, that would appear in your cash in hand balance. Okay, guys, let's go back to our topic and then we'll come back to the question answer session later on so you can see on your screen these are video tutorials from fpr's website dealing with all these individual segments i have gone through these tutorials they are basically uploaded on youtube and i do recommend you to have a look at them so for example just have a look here Or these 
Okay, the reason for showing you guys this was that normally when we uh, used to do income tax return filing session, there used to be a full day session of eight hours long, and we used to discuss each and every point in detail. Uh, because we only have two hour session today, um, owing to the limitation, the sessions are done uh, during this ongoing crisis. And otherwise, there was a thought that the attention span uh, is improved if it's a two hour session. Um, I think that in the interest of knowledge sharing, you guys should go through all these video clips. These are short video clips. They would give you a good idea of all the individual categories and many of your questions will be answered. If however, uh, after going through these, you still have any questions, feel free to ask me. I would also encourage you to let us know what you think, whether these two hour sessions are sufficient or you think the duration of these sessions should be increased. If the duration is increased, do you think it would be good for uh, the um, attention span and the retention? Please do share your feedback. Anyway, coming back to the return. So uh, we uh, reached the foreign sources and agricultural income section and the next one was tax chargeable and payments so if you have any deductible allowances zakat under section 60 to any of the approved zakat institution worker welfare fund uh, profit on that educational expenses they would all be declared here uh, if we have any income tax on working capital under 99a of 9 schedule it would be mentioned here if you are a full-time teacher or a foreign filmmaker, your tax reductions would be mentioned here. If you made any charitable donations, but to approved funds, that is important. The charitable donation has to be made to an approved fund only. They would come here. Okay, uh, similarly, any tax credit for investment in shares, Sukuk and life insurance, premium, health insurance, contribution to your approved punch, uh, pension fund, uh, they would come in all these section. There's a particular formula how you would uh, uh, calculate this tax credit. So for example, for approved pension fund, you need to go to section 63 of the income tax ordinance, see the formula there and do the working accordingly. Then comes the adjustable tax section. If any withholding tax has been deducted already, then you would mention that here. So for example, if you were an importer, if you are an importer or you are an employee of federal government and taxes have previously already been deducted, you would mention them here. Or if you supplied goods under section 153 and uh, withholding taxes were deducted from your payment, you would mention them here. If the tax was deducted on cash withdrawal from banking transaction, you would enter the detail here. You'll click on the plus sign. You'll enter the bank account details, all your account number, bank institution, and the amount that was deducted. Uh, then other than cash withdrawal, if there were other banking transactions on which taxes were deducted, you would need to mention them too. Then we'll move on to the tab of final fixed minimum average relevant reduced taxes. And for them, you would need to mention any taxes that have been deducted. So for some areas, they are categorization and the taxes can be fixed or final or adjustable depending on the exact item that you are dealing. You would need to refer to the relevant sections which are mentioned here. So for import, you'll need to see section 148 and the relevant schedule to see whether the item that you are importing, uh, the tax on that would fall within the adjustable or final fixed regime. So once all this is entered, you would click on the computation tab click on calculate and this would calculate your tax liability. So a question that Umar asked, Umar asked whether he need to enter any amount here or not. So if you have any allowance that is exempt from tax, so let's say my medical allowance is 600,000, I would enter that here. If I do not have any medical allowance, any exempt limit of that medical allowance, then I would not enter that here. 
So in this case, let's assume that out of this 24 lakh, 6 lakh is the medical allowance that my company is paying me 50,000 per annum. So I'll click on the calculate tab now, then I'll go into the computation tab, click on calculate tab. So all my income from salary, from property, from business, from other sources, etc., are shown. My total tax liability is computed. Let's say that some of the tax was already deducted. So let's say that as an employee, um uh let's just put in a random figure it was 24 lakhs so let's say 2 lakh was deducted from my income and let's say that as a business um i was providing uh, um let's say i was providing goods and um, um let's say 5 lakh has been deducted okay so Obviously, you would look at the actual data when you are filling the return. This is just a hypothetical scenario to give you an example. So now when you'll calculate this, you'll see that the withholding income tax that was deducted already is shown here and your total tax liability is reduced by that amount. Now we have filed the income tax return, but as an individual, you can see that the statement under section 116 of the income tax ordinance 2001 which is your wealth statement needs to be filed so you need to fill in your individual expenses your personal expenses uh, they can be vehicle running electricity telephone medical educational whatever and if you are receiving any contribution by family members you can also mention that then you have to show your wealth statement any assets that you may have You'll have to enter those details here. And then finally, there would be a reconciliation of the net asset. So it would be showing the net asset that you declared the previous year, the net asset you declared the, this year, any income that you declared subject to normal tax. Um, you'll have to actually see what you have declared in your income tax return for this. So the return income that you have declared subject to normal tax, you'll add that up. The amount that you have declared subject to final taxation, you'll add that up. And then you'll mention all these incomes here. So let's put in some figures because we are short on time. Let's just randomly put in the figures so you can actually see how this works. So now you can see that this year I've earned a lot and my assets have not increased. So there is a difference in the reconciliation. I have to account for that. I might be putting all this in my cash and bank, uh, cash in hand or cash and bank. So I'll simply increase these figures. If this is the cash in hand or bank, then I'll enter that figure there and then I'll press calculate and this reconciliation should come up to zero. Once this is done, if I'm also a business individual, I would need to enter my fixed asset schedule, which you are all aware of being accountants here. Then if I am an importer and I want to opt out of PTR, I can click this. Um, if I fall within the minimum tax regime being importer of plastic raw material, I'll fill this in. Otherwise, I'll just leave this. Because there is a tax liability, I can't file my income tax return till I submit my income tax liability. So I'll save this and I'll actually create a CPR for my tax liability. Submit that. Once that is submitted, I'll click here. I'll search here and a CPR would appear. I'll click that and that would be appearing here and then I'll be able to submit my tax return. But before submitting, I would have to verify the PIN and then I'll click submit and the return would be submitted. I'm not gonna submit this return because this fine gentleman shared his data and this is all hypothetical. We don't want to have uh, him land in a trouble uh, for just being good to us. So I hope you have gotten a fair idea of how income tax returns are filed. I know you would have a lot of questions how to create the chalans, etc. But this tutorial that I've just shared with you has many videos about how to do the tax payment, how to file the return, how to file the wealth statement for salaried individual. Please go through these videos. These are short videos, but would compensate you for the lack of time we had at our hands today. Even after the videos, if you have any confusion, Again and again, I've repeated that. Please feel free to contact me 
on any of my social media links and i'll be more than happy uh to guide you too and uh, as i promised with you on your screen you can now sh uh, see my contact details the best way to reach me is on linkedin if you do decide to send me an email or uh, send me a whatsapp message the best way is to introduce yourself if you are interacting with me for the first time uh, i will definitely answer you but as you can imagine there are many uh, different limitations on the time so it might be difficult uh, please bear with me if i don't respond to you immediately but i will respond to you so um, i would just go a little over the time and um, i would try to answer as many questions as we can now and thank you very much for being such a nice audience so let's answer some questions okay uh many comments and questions so okay um pause on my site's question recruitment okay zishan has asked treatment of income received that is credited into your account from mutual funds for the any gains realized but not received in closing values of mutual funds of an individual zishan not the topic of today uh, send me a message on linkedin muhammad uh, khalid muhammad tariq okay uh, please guide income tax refundable is adjusted against future tax liability or refunded to cash check uh, it's not income tax refundable. It's the excess income tax that you have paid You can either apply for a refund or adjustment against future liability in some scenarios It can only be carried forward for adjustment in others It can be applied for as a refund too, but practically refunds are cumbersome So many businesses prefer to get them adjusted against future liability. Hope that answers your question Naresh Kumar asked where we can insert the capital gain loss to be carried forward. Uh, Naresh, I've already shown that the video of this session would be available, so you'll be able to see that. Nanita Jain Nech, uh, Nechnani. Um, I hope I've pronounced that properly, Nanita. If not, my apologies. If an individual's income is taxable in tax year 2018 and started filing return for tax uh, from tax year 2018, but then that individual has opening balance in the bank account and has received notice from tax authorities what should the individual do nanita the individual should respond now what should they respond would depend on what notice have they received sajad sheikh if an individual was private employee for six months and remained government federal employee for next six months then which option he would choose in the return he would segregate declare his income for six months as private six months as government employee Muhammad Ahmad Khan, if we have tax refundable, how can we proceed? By applying for a tax refund. Um, Tariq Khan, for individuals, do we need to separately file wealth statement? We need to file wealth statement. Now they are incorporated in the format of uh, the original tax return. However, if you are going for a revised tax return, you would need to file a separate statement. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Comments. Thanks for your kind comments. Who pays agricultural tax and what's its criteria? We already discussed that, Hajra. Um, sir, please arrange a session on filing quarterly advance tax. Mazar Essen. Okay, please send us an email. You can send that to me directly or to members of here or send me that on LinkedIn and I'll pass that on and inshallah we'll uh, arrange that. Uh, Salim Sadruddin, uh, sir, where we enter ACC annual subscription in return in your expenses reconciliation or if your employer is paying that or if he is reimbursing you as a benefit in kind in the salary other perquisites section. Bilal Ahmed, if someone is giving services as software developer and receive foreign income, will it be exempt? Uh, IT export are currently exempt. If you fulfill all the other criteria, it will be. Okay, um, I think we have a lot of question. We might even need to do another session on this one. Um, I will discuss that and get back to you. Um, I hope today's session was of value for you and these two hours were a positive investment. These are testing times. Uh, you might have free time 
much more free time at your hand use them positively uh, attend all these cpd series uh, if you want to equip yourself with taxation knowledge in more detail, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel too. You have free of cost recordings available there. Uh, ACCA's GoTo webinar uh, channel will also have the recordings of the sessions which you can attend. Um, do let us know if you want the timing of the sessions to be extended. Do let us know which other topics interest you. Uh, if you have any specific questions, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Feel free to attend the future sessions. These are complimentary. There's no charge for you. And uh, this would be a good way to turn uh, your free time into a blessing by developing your professional skills. I hope this session added value to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for being such a nice audience. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.